So here is the full footprint of the base, with the front being this side and the back here. We have four raised foundations total, the TC will occupy this one. A basic door path will lead through here, running into the roof bunker at this location. The type of roof bunker we'll be using is this. This one has both HQM roofs already placed, which puts them in an open state. To close the bunker, you must build something up here. This closes it up, and then breaking it reopens it. Technically, you can build anything up here, but I'll be using a short wall. The first thing we'll need to build is our starter base with all the most basic amenities. A sleeping bag, storage, campfire, furnace, workbench, and of course, our TC. This is a very basic build, and this is how we do it. We're going to start with the square so that these two raised triangle foundations are lined up the right way. If you have no idea what I'm talking about here, I'll link a short video for you to watch. Now we can start walling this in. This first triangle will have the TC and our door goes on this foundation. You could start with wood doors here if you need to. When we get to this lower square, you'll notice we have to bring the walls up one extra half height to get the ceiling the same level. This costs a little bit extra up front, but we'll pay off later with the extra storage. Next we'll put the TC in and an extra door on the front. I always try to keep at least two doors between me and the outside. Next will be the sleeping bag. This goes in the airlock here and perpendicular to the wall on the right. The furnace can fit next to the TC. If you wiggle it, it should go back far enough to where you can fit in this window frame after. The earlier you get a glass window the better, but it's not a concern right now. In this square, with some tactical placements, we can avoid having to pick stuff up and moving it over and over again. So if we place the first two small boxes like that, when we upgrade to large boxes, they can fit right beside them. This bottom part of the loot room will have four large boxes in a circle. If you watched the video that I linked, this will make a lot of sense. If you need more storage than this before the workbench, you can add another large box here instead. There will also be another spot you can add a workbench into after we expand the footprint in the next section. But for right now, our starter base is done. One thing you may want to add now, depending on your terrain, is this low foundation, which will give you a known jump height to get into the base. For the roof bunker, we'll add in this square with a triangle on each side. After two more foundations like this, we will have this new addition. The basic idea is to have the roof here which blocks the path into our core. We can section this space off and then we can add in the roof. After we place the triangle roof on the left side, the bunker will open. You can see we are kinda in a vulnerable state right now. So the next thing we must do is come out of the front and to the top. We'll want to add half walls up top here and close it off completely. Remember, this roof bunker requires that something be built up here to close it, and we don't want that to be visible to the outside or this entire setup is pointless. I really don't like to leave a roof bunker on the very front of a base like this, so what we could do for now is build up two wall frames and just add in two doors. You can also add a trap in here to help prevent people from going deep. This new addition allows us to add in some more cool stuff. The first area I like to use is this space by the roof. Under here we can grab two large boxes and place them like this. Place them as close to the roof as possible which will leave us room for the level 3 later. Before we go any further we'll want to build a wall frame here. The next thing will be the workbench. You could also put the level 1 here in the beginning, but for us, we'll be putting in the level 2 now. We'll jump down and just kind of work it into the corner and add the small box after. I also like to add a furnace right here. This will obviously help increase metal production, but it also works to help move through this gap smoothly both ways. With those things in, we can now work on the space above. We'll need two large boxes, one small one, and two barbecues. The first barbecue goes right into this corner with the small box. The second one right next to it. This space up here is kind of weird since this roof is messing with all the hitboxes, so we'll need to line this one up and then slide it left.
The two large boxes go in as normal and should fit easily. Kind of a weird setup I know, but it's kind of what it has to be. You can also access everything. Now let's start upgrading and adjusting our two most important parts of the base since the raid cost is kind of wonky right now. First thing we'll upgrade is the TC room to metal. If we jump up here we'll be able to upgrade these two walls but not the ceiling or the floor. We'll do the ceiling soon but we can upgrade the floor from right inside here. Unfortunately it is blocked by this box so we'll have to pick it up. Since we have already upgraded past the prim state we can also get rid of this other stuff. We might as well upgrade this too or we'll run into the same upgrade block that we just did. After that we can replace the box we picked up and fill in the rest of the floor with large boxes in a circle pattern. You can wait on this upgrade but the more stuff we add into this room the harder it becomes to access. Now one third of our main loot room is done and depending on where you are material wise you can start upgrading the rest of this room too. Remember, once you do get a glass window or better, place it here. Now one of the things I would call the most important upgrade would be the roof now. When people see there is sheet metal walls but with a full stone roof, it's pretty inviting for raiders. So what we'll do is shimmy up the slanty roof and upgrade the whole top to metal starting here at the TC. Upgrading this will prevent the roof raid but it creates one weakness which we'll talk about now and fix with garage doors. The first garage door should definitely go right here. You will have to pick up the workbench and furnace to place it, face the top part this way so that it doesn't stick through the roof. The second garage door you get should go right here. This is because if we take a look at the raid cost, the TC is behind sheet metal and so is the main loot which is 8 rockets. That leaves this wall which is only 4 plus 1 for the sheet door, totals 5 which is considered a shortcut to me. So depending on your situation, you do have two options here. You can upgrade this wall to metal, which eliminates the problem completely, or you can add this garage door now, which is slightly less ideal, but ultimately, we'll end up doing both. I also like to use this second door for some cover like this if people do start to door raid you. So we still have a decent amount of work to do on the outside, but first, let's add in a bit more storage. We'll use a square floor here because it adds to the raid cost later on. If you can imagine a raider coming through this back wall, they would be able to take TC and remove the window. Without this here, they would be able to grab all of your loot. So placing this here is pretty useful, and for now, we can get a decent amount of storage out of it just like this. I tend to not use barbecues in small boxes with larger group bases since it makes looking through everything a pain. But with a solar base this is fine because you'll remember where you put everything. If everything is well placed then closing the garage door even though it's facing this way will not reveal anything except for the floor piece. You can still access the furnace and the TC from under here. Now we can start adding in all of this honeycomb, but of course, we'll do this piece by piece. For the honeycomb, we'll come out of the front door, and around our core, we'll add in raised foundations where we can, and low ones on the rest. Next what we'll do is add full walls on each of the foundations whether they're raised or not. We'll skip this last one next to the door for now, but the next thing we should do is go onto the roof and put the top parts on. Now you can see that some of the honeycomb is level with the roof, but some are not. We want them all to be even, so we'll add half heights where needed. Once the honeycomb is all the same height, we can start building the entrance. 
Now since we have two doors on the front here, we'll have to build up both sides at the same time. We'll start here on the right since it adds honeycomb to the TC. We'll start by walling this in like so. We'll add a half wall here facing this way which will make sense in just a second. Our roof here and close it with a half wall. I'd like to put a large battery in here and this will eventually be our bedroom. Now on the other side we'll add two full walls to the edge with a wall frame across from this door. This will be for vision through a shop front. This side will have our door, but we want to have it a half height above the ground so that we can fit our door camper protection on the very front. Now we don't want to cut our door in half with the ceiling, so what we can do is raise the rest of this area up one half height. This actually matches that half wall that we built before and gives us this little triangle area up here. We'll come back to add in some depot boxes later, but first let's get our door camper protection built. At the very front, add in these two triangles with the frame on the right side. The door will go here and we want to raise it like the other. You can break the twig bottom and it's still stable. This is where we build the square and you can put the shop front in at any time. On this square we want to build a ramp that ends at the door and upgrade it to metal which gives us a bunch of gaps to aim through. The door can swing either way but I like to swing it out so that it doesn't cut this inner room in half when you use it. Adding in a low wall is also useful here, one for more cover and two for stopping people from looting you through the gap if you do lose. To close this up we'll just use the cheapest config possible. Now our base has been fully honeycombed around the side but the top needs to be stacked at least above our core. Our core here is all sheet metal from before. What we can do is jump onto the roof and simply outline the sheet metal with stone half walls. This will eventually be sheet metal too, but stone should work for now. Now one thing that is very important before you put the top on here is upgrading this triangle to HQM. This is above the TC and we will not be able to upgrade it after this point. I like to separate the TC out with two half walls like this and then we can also put an extra one here to separate these two rooms below. After that we can cover up the top. With honeycomb on all sides of our base it's time we start adding in better doors and upgrading the inside so that we get the most raid cost out of our space. First we'll add in our final three garage doors, the first of which goes back here. The last two go in the front of the bunker. Garage doors and spaces like this really open up the footprint for you and give you space to move around in. It just feels so much more open now. Now here is the upgrading section. You can upgrade this piece by piece as you get the required materials in game. I'm going to go right into HQM here to save you time in the video. In the end, just make sure all the pieces match. You'll be able to reach most of the pieces just by moving around. This one back here you will have to move a box or two to reach. When upgrading, I like to prioritize the TC. As you can see, we have a wall that's all the way back there. We can't reach it from this side, but as you can see, it's easy from the other side. After armoring the walls and main loot, I like to upgrade the shelf and the window frame to metal just to make a raider's life harder. When it comes to these two foundations, we'll run into the same problem as before and we'll have to pick these up temporarily. If anyone knows a way around this, let me know about it in the comments below.
Now the only real downside to this style of roof bunker is we are left with extra stuff we have to upgrade to maintain its integrity. We have good use of this space in the form of storage so it is worth it and you can upgrade all of the pieces like this. Once all of this is HQM, the base is now 19 rockets to raid from all directions. Pretty solid for its size and effort. Now I just noticed that somewhere in editing, the sleeping bag was missing from a few clips, but it is now safely returned to us. Everything we just did is not affected by its presence, so we're good. Now this next part is semi-terrain dependent. We have some floors that are not equal to the HQM walls. Generally sheet metal is fine here, but this stone is no good. Now I wouldn't bother upgrading this until you're ready to place the level 3 which goes here. When you have the level 3, upgrade both of the floor tiles and then this frame to sheet metal. If we stand on this roof, we can place the level 3 nice and easy. I say nice and easy, but this placement is actually incredibly hard. But not for me though, because I am a professional, so... We'll put a small box under it, and from the top, we'll wiggle in the furnace. We still have some stuff to add in the core here, but this is good for right now. Let's take a look at our door path and see if we can make any upgrades that make sense. So looking at our door path here, it's one rocket for this, and then six for both garages. That means that we could probably get away with upgrading this room to sheet metal. This works out good because this will be our bedroom outside the bunker and it also makes direct raiding into the TC room more expensive. There are also some weird odds and ends here, like this triangle. We don't want raiders to be able to raid this foundation and then hit the one below the roof for less than the roof itself costs to raid. This can be avoided completely by upgrading the square under the roof to HQM, but I still like to make this one metal. This is really kind of dependent on terrain as well. We can upgrade that roof and then we are almost ready to start finishing our core. The first thing we need to do is fix this weak spot. You can actually splash this roof that's sticking out, so to fix this, we'll have to add a square honeycomb. Now if we go back into the main core, I'd like to suggest this option for you. It's possible to add a triangle right here and upgrade it to sheet metal. This makes a cool spot for a repair bench. Before you place it, make sure you place the bunker seal so that it doesn't get blocked in the process. You can place two small boxes under a repair bench, so it's a pretty good use of space in my opinion. The reason some people might not like this is because when it's added, it does make it kind of cramped in here. Now we can finish our main loot room. You can do this at any time before this as well. We'll need a triangle right here, but since there is no half wall to build on, we'll need to add some build up on the back of the base. So if we come outside, you can see that this triangle is next to the sheet metal. We can build this twig and also get one into the honeycomb. Once it's in, you can get rid of this, and now on the inside we have something to attach the triangle to. On this shelf, I like to place two large boxes. Now if you're anything like me, this twig's mere existence will haunt you, so don't worry, all you have to do is remove any wood out of the TC and it will decay to where it belongs. Now our main core inside the bunker is finished, so let's go out to the front where we can add some stuff cause it's looking kinda vacant right now. So what is the most important thing in a bedroom you ask? Well, the bed. It goes right here. Now more and more people use electricity in their bases now, so here is where you can put a battery if you need one. It's secure enough for a base this size and even a large one fits there. Now we'll grab a locker and three more small boxes. The locker goes up against the wall and we fill in the floor with the boxes.
Now we have this section, which is right after the front doors, so this will make for a good depot box and research area. We don't need all of this space though, and it is better to add honeycomb to the side of a roof bunker anyway, so that's what we'll do. Now this part sticking through actually has the potential to save a raid or rockets in a door raid, so we'll cover it up like this. We can even extend this out one triangle to give us more room to work with. On this top part, we'll add in the research table and a large box. We can place a furnace next to it, which will give us three total in the base. Under the triangle, we can grab three large boxes and place them in the following way. Push this third one forward so that we can get a small one next to it. It's good to have some depot boxes close to the front door like this so that you could drop stuff off very quickly and go right back outside. And that leaves us with this space. I'm tempted to put a turret up here just for the lols, although it would be useful. Now you could also place a couple of boxes up here, but I leave this area up to you and what you need. One final thing we should do is come up to the roof and upgrade the roof stack to sheet metal. Now although this base is designed to withstand 19 rockets from all directions in its current form, I believe a top down raid should be more expensive since they will be able to access more for the same amount of rockets. A couple of final upgrades I'd like to do for a peace of mind is this stuff above the center point of the whole base. It just kind of makes sense in my mind to do this. Although it is definitely not required, if you do happen to run into a single armored door, the best place to put it would be right here. And that is pretty much the base. Let me know what you all think of this style of roof bunker and how you would use it in one of your designs. You can contact me in the discord if you have any questions or things to add. Until then, see ya!